Good day everyone. In today's lesson, we are going to study matrices. For the overview of this lesson, first we are going to talk about terminologies and second, we are going to discuss operations on matrices. What is a matrix? A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. The numbers in the array are called the entries in the matrix. Some examples of matrices are this one. So you have here a rectangular array. You just have the numbers and the numbers that you find inside are called the entries. The size or the dimension of a matrix is described in terms of the number of rows and columns it contains. For example, we have here this matrices. Let us determine the size or the dimension of this matrices. For the first matrix, we have here three rows and we have two columns. So therefore, we say that the size of this matrix is 3 by 2. For this matrix here, we have one row and how many columns? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we say that this is of size 1 by 4. And for this matrix here, this has three rows and one column. So therefore, this is a three by one matrix. A matrix with only one row is called a row matrix. Like in this case, we have here a row matrix. And a matrix with only one column is called a column matrix. This matrix over here is a column matrix. A matrix with the same number of rows and columns is called a square matrix. Now what we want to do next is to identify the entry that occurs in a certain row and a certain column. We denote the entry that occurs in row i and column j of a matrix by a i j. What this is saying is that if I have here a matrix, and this is row i, and this is column j, then that entry over here, the entry in row i and column j, is what we call our a i j. Of course, a here is just a notation. It can be c i j, it can be anything, as long as you have the subscripts i j. So for example, I have here a matrix having four columns. The entries in the first row will be denoted by A11. This is in the first row. This is first column, second column, third column, and fourth column. Hence, the entries in the first row will be denoted by A11. For this one, this is A12. This is A13, and this is A14. Similarly, the entries in the second row will be denoted by A21, A22, A23, A24, and so on. In general, the entries of an n by n matrix A can be written as follow. Here I have m rows and and columns. We also write a to be equal to small a i j m by n here because we want to denote the size. Or sometimes we just use, well most of the time we just use this notation over here. Let us now determine the conditions for two matrices to be equal. So there are two conditions that must be satisfied. First is that they should have the same size. Second, their corresponding entries must be equal. For example, we want to determine the values of A, B, C, and D so that these two matrices are equal. Note that the first condition is already satisfied. They already have the same size. Both of them are 2 by 2 matrices. Thus, for the second condition, we just want their corresponding entries to be equal. So we will just equate the 
entries. Hence, we have A is equal to 1, B is equal to 3, C is equal to 5, and D is equal to 2. We will now discuss the different operations on matrices. Just like real numbers, we can perform operations on matrices. For our first operation, we discuss matrix addition. If A and B are matrices of the same size, take note here that we have this condition. Matrix addition is only defined for matrices having the same size. Then the sum A plus B is the matrix obtained by adding the entries of A to the corresponding entries of B. We will just add the entries entry-wise. Mathematically, this means that if A is the matrix whose ij entries are denoted by aij, and B is the matrix whose ij entries are denoted by taj, the sum of the matrices A and B is just the matrix whose ij entries are aij plus taj. And this is the warning that I already told you before. Matrices of different sizes cannot be added or subtracted because we have this condition here, that they should have the same size. Suppose we have these three matrices, A, B, and C. Let us find the following. A plus C, A plus B. Let's do number one. For number one, we want to add A and C. What can you say about these two matrices? Take note that matrix A has size. 3 by 4, whereas matrix C has size 2 by 2. A and C have different sizes, therefore they cannot be added. Now let's proceed with A plus B. Take note that they have the same size. They are both of size 3 by 4. They both have 3 rows and 4 columns. So let's proceed with the addition. We just add them entry y so we have 2 plus negative 4 so that's negative 2 1 plus 3 is 4 0 plus 5 is 5 3 plus 1 is 4 adding all of the entries we now get this matrix for scalar multiplication we have a matrix a and a scalar when we say scalar, we're just talking about a real number. Here we are combining a scalar and a matrix, so that's why it's called scalar multiplication. We will learn later that there is another kind of multiplication, and that is matrix multiplication, wherein we are going to multiply two matrices. How do we define the product CA? It is the matrix obtained by multiplying each entry of the matrix A by C. We say that the matrix CA is a scalar multiple of A. Mathematically speaking, what this means is that if A is this matrix, the IJ entries are denoted by AIJ and C is a real number, then the scalar multiple C times A is just a matrix whose IJ entry is equal to C times AIJ. Now take note here, class, that we can now define our take note here that we can now define the matrix negative A. Correct? So what this is saying is that we just multiply all of the entries of A by negative 1. Hence, we can now define the difference of two matrices. B minus A. This is simply matrix addition of B and negative of A. Suppose we have these two matrices A and B. We want to find the following. We want to find 3A and second, we want to find 3A minus 1 half B. So first, let us find 3A. We just have to multiply all the entries of A by 3. Hence, we have 
zero twenty seven six negative nine negative three and three. That is our three. Next, let us have B. We want to have one half B. Just multiply everything by one half. Eight times one half is four. One half. This is negative seven halves. This is zero. This is two. Negative one half. Hence, what is our 3a minus 1 half b? This means that we just have to subtract the entries of 1 half b from 3a entry wise. For the first entry, we have 0 minus 4. That's negative 4. 27 minus 1 half is, I will just write it as 26.5. Minus 7 halves, that is 6 minus 3.5, that is 2.5. Negative 9 minus 0 is negative 9. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. 3 minus negative 1 half is 3.5. Before we discuss the definition of matrix multiplication, let us consider this problem. Suppose a football stadium has three concession areas located in the south, north, and west stands. The top selling items are peanuts, hot dogs, and soda. Let me discuss the meaning of the entries here. For example, there were 120 peanuts that were sold at the south stand. And this 120 over here is saying that there were 120 hot dogs that were sold at the West stand. This selling price here refer to the price of peanuts. This is the price of peanuts, hot dogs, and soda. Suppose that we want to find the sales or the revenue for each particular location. For the south stand, what will be the revenue here? There were 120 peanuts, but each peanut is two dollars plus 250 pieces of hot dogs times three dollars plus 305 soda cans where each can cost 2.75 that is 1828.75 similarly when we do all the computations for the north stand and west stand, we will obtain these values. Take note that what were we doing here? For the north stand, we were multiplying these entries with these entries over here, wherein we have 207 times 2, 140 times 3, and then 419 times 2.75. Let us first define this. Suppose that we have the following matrices wherein A is a row matrix and B is a column matrix. What this is saying is that the number of entries in the row matrix should be the same as the number of entries in the column matrix. We now define their product B. What is this? A1, B1 plus A2, B2 and so on up to AN. And so this is just similar to what we have earlier. We are just multiplying the entries, entry-wise, and then we add all the products that we obtained. We are now ready to define matrix multiplication. A is N by B and B is P by N. Take note that this is saying that the number of columns of the first matrix should be the same as the number of rows of the second matrix. We now define the product AB to be the matrix with size N by M. So take note that what will be the size of the new matrix? It's going to be this one, N by it's as if this one will get cancelled out. So that's why 
this two should be the same. Remember that. Let me just repeat what that is saying. We have n by p, and then p by m. This is the size of a, and this is the size of b. The product ab will have size of n by m. So we already know what will be the size of the product. Now let us discuss how do we get the entries of this matrix AP. It's given by this one. It can be found by multiplying row I of A with column J of B. Let me illustrate that with an example. Let us compute AC and CA for the following two matrices if possible. Now take note that from the definition, it's not always the case that the product is defined. You should have that the number of columns of A should be the same as the number of columns of the second matrix. Let's look at AC first. Let's see which ones will be defined. For AC, A is a 2 by 4 matrix, whereas C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 by 3. They are the same, so therefore the product AC is a 2 by 3 matrix. Let us look at C times A. C times A is this even defined, so C is 4 by 3. Whereas A is 2 by 4, so therefore this is not defined. That is not defined because this is not the same as this one. So hence, we will only multiply AC. And again, AC is a 2 by 3 matrix. We already know earlier that. AC is a 2 by 3 matrix. So let me just put this is 1. This will be an entry. 2 by 3. Let us compute first the 1, 1 entry of AC. The 1, 1 entry of AC can be obtained by multiplying row 1 of A with first column of C. The 1, 1 entry of AC is equal to 1 times 8 plus negative 3 times negative 3, plus 0 times 2, plus 4 times negative 1. And that is equal to 17 minus 4. That's equal to 30. Next, let us compute the 1, 2, and 3. That's equal to the first row of A times the second column of B. That is equal to 1 times 5 plus negative 3 times 10 plus 0 times 0 plus 4 times negative 7. And that is equal to negative 53. Next, let's compute for the 1, 3, and 3. 1, 3, and 3 is equal to the first row times the third column. So that's 1 times 3 plus negative 3 times 2 plus 0 times negative 4 plus 4 times 5 and that is equal to 17. For the 2 1 entry, it's equal to the second row of A times the first column of C. Similarly, the 2 2 entry is equal to the second row times the second column. When you compute the remaining entries, you will obtain these values. Now, suppose we are only interested with certain rows or certain columns of a certain product. Here is a theorem that can help us in computing those rows or columns. So, suppose that A and B are appropriately sized so that AB is defined, and we want to find the ith row of AB. All we have to do is compute the i-th row of A times the matrix B 
and the jth column of AB is given by multiplying A with the jth column of B. Mathematically speaking, if you have the product AB, that is the same as multiplying the entries of A with the n columns of B. These are the n columns of B. And the columns of the product is given by A times the first column, A times the second column of B, and so on. And if A is the matrix whose rows, take note here that A1, A2, and AN are row matrices. The rows of AB will be given by the first row of A times B, the second row of A times B, and so on. So suppose again we have this matrix AC here, our previous example. Let us compute the first row of AC. So what we need to do, according to our theorem, we just get this row matrix over here and multiply that with our matrix C. Let's first look at the dimensions. This is a 1 by 4 matrix. This is a 4 by 3 matrix. So therefore, the product is of size 1 by 3, which is exactly what we want. So this times this, we already did this in our previous slides, we will obtain that this is equal to 13. This row times this second column is equal to negative 53. And this row times this third column is equal to 17. Next, let us compute for the second column of AC. From our theorem, it's just the same as multiplying A with the second column of C. So I have here my A and the second column of C. Let us check again the, let us check again the dimension. This one here is 2 by 4 whereas this is 4 by 1. So therefore, what we'll have will be a 2 by 1, which is exactly what we want because that will be the second column of AC. First row times this column will be equal to negative 53. And second row times this one will be equal to negative 23. For our last operation, we will now discuss the definition of transpose. If A is an M by an N matrix, then the transpose of A, denoted by A transpose, is defined to be the N by M matrix that results by interchanging the rows and columns of A. That is, the first column of A transpose is the first row of A, the second column of A transpose is the second row of A, and so on. Let us take a look at the following. Take note that what happens to the size class? The size, if the matrix is of size M by N, of course, the number of rows and the number of columns will just be interchange. And why is that? It's because of this fact. Remember that we interchange the rows and the columns of A. So that is why the first column of A transpose is the first row of A and so on. So for example, we want to find the transpose of the following matrices. For A transpose, for A transpose, what we will do is that the first row will now become the second column. So that's 4, 10, negative 7, and 0. The second row will be the second column. Let us look at B transpose. Now take note that B is a column matrix. So therefore, the transpose will now be a row 
matrix. 9, negative 1, 8. And lastly, C transpose. This is a 3 by 3 matrix. Again, the first row will be the first column. So that's C11. The second row will be the second column. And lastly, the third row, this one should be 3. Okay, the third row will be the third column. That's it. We also discussed the definition of trace of a matrix. Take note that the trace of a matrix is only defined for a square matrix. The trace of A, denoted by this symbol, is defined to be the sum of the entries on the main diagonal of A. For example, this will be the matrices that we had earlier. Compute for the trace of A. Can we compute for the trace of A class? Take note that A is not a square matrix. Since it is not a square matrix, that means that the trace of A is undefined. Because the trace of a matrix is only defined for square matrices. Next, for B, this is a square matrix. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. So therefore, the trace of B, that's the sum of 1 plus 4. So that's equal to 5. Next, the trace of C. C is a 3 by 3 matrix. So therefore, it's just equal to the sum of the entries in the main diagonal. So the trace of C is equal to C11 plus C22 plus C33. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss the properties of this matrix operations.